On today's Man of the Apes, the honest trailer for this movie would be, let's watch them apes get drunk. Welcome to Men of the Apes, the daily podcast where we break down every Planet of the Ape movies one minute at a time. And Richard and I wonder, <laughs> was Sean talking about us in the intro the, to this? Is he calling us two apes who two get drunk? drunk? Apes. The two drunk apes. It, well, y'all only a half beer in. So no, not yet. Now, is that because Richard and I are shorter than you and you think for some you reason you need to joke about us in that you way? You can't hold as much alcohol in your body as I can. You know what? You're I can. Apes. I can drink as much as I want to right now and you can't. I can, la, 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 I'm la, drinking la, for la, two, guys. I can drink it <laughs> I can drink as much as I want to as well. And I choose to drink none. So there. <laughs> Whatevs. All right. All right. Now that we've got the teasing out of the way, we are on to minute 47 yes. of Escape from the Plain Days. So, Sean, I'm going to ask what I ask kind of on every Tuesday. What you thinking of the movie to this point? Uh, okay, so we are getting close to the halfway point. Uh, next week, I think Thursday is halfway through the movie when okay. we finish that minute. And when you think about it, they are just now starting to introduce the potential dark, part of the movie you know besides an ape getting killed by a gorilla True, in the beginning yeah. of it i mean it's they've shown up they went before a congressional hearing of some sort then they got to go party on the town get drunk and now we're talking to the president that's pretty much the movie to this point right yeah but you're absolutely right i i even have in this moment and i'll, I'll go ahead and say it now that this minute itself is probably the biggest turning point of the movie Period. Well, they're trying to say, all right, this they're like setting the tone for the rest of the film. You exactly. So? Oh, without question. I think the, right. the president has line open the door to basically say, is this where we're going to go? And that's what it's saying is that is this where we're going to take our story? And I think this is absolutely when you talk about that, that we're coming up on the midpoint of the film. Yeah, the midpoint been... usually shifts your film in another direction. And here it is. I mean, we haven't gotten to the part where the story where you take your characters and run them up a tree and throw rocks at them and make them but have it's a close. difficult life. So far, life has been pretty easy for them. But but if we're talking about like this being the rest of the movie, this particular moment, you, you mentioned uh, last week about the fact that the pregnancy came out of nowhere, which yeah. should have been hinted at the beginning of the movie somehow, mm-hmm. right? Why they were escaping. I was like, eh, I'm pregnant. I have known since the last movie. And and Hasline as potentially sinister villain wasn't really introduced until you got to the commission. You're like... Something's see something's going on with him. He's bad. Mm-hmm. This is kind of a random spot to be like halfway through the movie. Here's what we're really going to do. Oh, well, see, I, I actually disagree with you because if if it's not the middle of the movie, and then it's kind of what you call the pinch, which is the setup for the middle, and you can do a little twist of it so it gets us there. And I think that when you know, and we will, we are going to discuss this, but I just want to talk about the implications of what I'm seeing. And the, when they speak about what they speak about, they are speaking of, and they're putting in our heads what might happen going forward. And when you do that, you've now shifted the film. And I don't think it's an odd place. I actually think it's just about spot on, perfect place to switch it, because you have to have a new conversation. And they get actually pretty deep into some conversations over the next couple of minutes. That to me are back to the courtroom scenes from the first film. All right, so so Planet of the Apes mm-hmm. was arriving on Planet of the Apes. Mm-hmm. Beneath the Planet of the Apes happened when they got to Beneath the Planet of the Apes later on in the film. Mm-hmm. Escape happened in the first like five minutes. Well, is it Escape from that? Like, point? like what, what, there's nothing in the title that suggests that well, this is the rest of the movie. Well, right? no, because it could be humankind trying to escape the fate of becoming a Planet of the Apes. So it's Escape from the Planet oh, of the Apes. Oh, all right, all right, all 
right, we are right, trying I'm to stop following. that. It's, following. Following. it's a double play on it's, what I it means. See, see. They back. literally okay. escaped over here, but are we escaping our future? Ah, uh, the plan of the age. Okay, I've never thought of that before. And uh, in the next coming minutes, because the next, uh, I think, the, until Friday, uh, stays with the president. Pretty much, yeah. Thing. <clears throat> I think it would Excuse have been me. better if they – it just has to be in a conversation here. If they would establish like a relationship, a personal relationship between the president and the and Hathline so I that agree. there's more intimacy in the conversation rather than just getting information from a subordinate. If it was, you know, I've known you since college and you've never come up with crazy ideas like this before. You've always had backing for it. How can you possibly believe blah, blah, blah? Well, Ms. well Bob – I'm not, you know, Mr. President, no, call me Bob. I'm your friend. I've known you since college. Come on, we were going to fly in that spaceship, but the cosmic rays, we stopped each other. You you really could add those layers onto this that, that make it more of a... Like th- that a, way, there's, of, of an honest conversation uh, yeah. instead of a factual dissertation yeah. of what's going I, on. I, I I would think that that would negate the the calmness that the president has in the situation that he he is. I mean, if you were pleading, I don't necessarily disagree. If you were pleading with Hassline in terms of um, what he needed out of this as a friend, I think the tone would be a little bit different. The fact that t- to me, uh, the president at this moment is uh, Dane's voice. In how you counter Hassline. Like, there's nothing about the president that seems uniquely presidential about it. It just sounds like the, this is the actual counter argument. I need all the facts. I can't just say, you can't just say, you can't just play the jump to conclusion games and right. expect me to go, well, you said that. Let's launch the nukes at the monkeys so that they don't take over the earth. He, he's literally, he's literally like the, 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 the perfect calm counterpoint to everything that's rational. And now we're supposed to believe the Hassline is not rational. So I want to bring up, too, something you just said there that is so crucial to why this whole scene works that we did not get enough of in Beneath. When you have a conversation you must have, they don't have to be conflicting. They just have to have different points of view. Mm-hmm. They, they don't have to be confrontational. You simply have to have two people coming at the same thing from different positions. That's exactly what is occurring in this entire scene without them being, I'm going to punch you in the face, but it is a constant push. And that's why this conversation, again, plays so much better than anything did in Beneath the Planet of the Apes. This, anything. This is one of the best conversations we've had two characters have in the entire two and a half movies we've seen so far. I've, just be- I've actually got notes for like Thursday <laughs> when we get there for that very point. You're just, right. Just because, they're, just because he is being he's being honest, he's being real. I mean, he even brings in the political implications of the fact that uh, uh, let's see, making sure that I'm in, still in this minute. Uh, yeah, he talks about election stuff. He's not concerned about stuff until the next election. Yeah, he brings up. I mean, he he stays on message of yes, this is important, but really, I need to focus on my term because a, that's the only thing I can control is the four to eight years I'm in office, and b, that's the only thing I want to be able to control is making sure that I'm in office. Well, there was something really interesting: the fact that he brought up a biblical biblical reference that he brought up Herod, right? That's this minute, right? Evan jumped ahead. Wait, what'd you say? The Herod references. In oh, yeah, that's in yeah. here. Yeah, Herod's yeah, yeah. in here. Yeah. Yeah. That he specifically brings up a Herod reference, the fact that uh, Herod, uh, King Herod. Um, yes. He, King Herod tried that and Christ survived. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Slaughtered uh, innocent boys under the age of two in, in, in the city uh, just to specifically try and catch Jesus and then got out of it. And he's making this reference about the fact. I mean, it's, it's interesting. But- we they that the savior was tried to kill before history was tried to be averted yet still the savior came. But there's a, he's making a Christ reference to Zira and the baby, the baby. And, and, and whatever the baby specifically is. the baby. Yeah. yeah, I find that kind of interesting. We're bringing that back in. Is that something the audience at this time would actually recognize? Because honest, if you made this this Herod reference today, I'm not sure how many people would follow it. I think w- regardless, back then, of, more people would have got it. And I think because that, also that was back. Sorry, uh, whenever big movies like. Uh, Cecil B. DeMille's Ten, Ten Commandments, Commandments and all that kind of stuff are still relatively fresh in mind. And I, I actually think this minute plays intentionally. I'd be surprised if Dane didn't go back and look at what made number one work. Because if you write this, you're going to definitely go read the first two scripts. But you start thinking about the lawgiver and the kind of conversations that are had. What is our lawgiver but Jesus? You know, that's well, this, for this some direct, of the. Or, or Moses is a direct correlation, yes. But but for the majority of the people who are going to see this, the yeah. Christian Society of America that sees this, that's exactly what it is. And I, it was very calculated to me to have choices of going to biblical references, and I thought it was borderline brilliant. 
because it really does bring it back that our societies, though we may have blown it up and had tornadoes encompassing the white core of the earth, we didn't change. I wanted Hassan. We went from humans to monkeys, but we're basically the same thing. I want Hassan to go, yeah, but Herod didn't have the technology we would have had. I would have bagged that little. (laughs) <laughs> but I mean, that's basically what he said. I mean, that was the. I mean, he it didn't. Is. He didn't say it in a cruel way. He didn't say it in a a sinister way, which is what you want from him because the actor's not giving that. I mean, he said Herod tried that and Christ survived. The, the president says, and he goes, Herod liked our facilities, and I'm like, holy uh-huh, shit! He's, saying, he's like, we're just gonna like annihilate it. It's all done. We uh, can but, do it all. See, that's exactly why it's I terrifying. say this, this moment terrifying. changes the film because in it, the president comes along, and this is the moment when the president says they're they're, they're not to be harmed. Essentially, mm-hmm. they are suddenly. The conversation of this film is not, let's take them and put new clothes on them. Let's get them drunk. Let's take them to boxing masters. Let's let them talk to the women's association. This is, are we going to kill them? We're going to kill them. We're going to let the baby. And there's where the conversation changes. And when you change the conversation, you change the film. And I think at this point, even though it really doesn't come off, there's no directive to kill. The conversation is now there. And as an audience, we begin to think everything we see from this point forward, are they going to kill our characters? I, I wanted Hassan to go, as St. Hicks said in Aliens, you come from space, it's the only way to be sure. I, I, orbit. I think there's some stuff in Wednesday and Thursday that we're not quite there yet, so I don't really want to delve too much into it. But what I what I liked about the fact that the president just kind of brings it back, Herod also became a popular, historically popular, and we don't want that, do we? And the president's saying a message right there. And I need to be popular. I I'm, need to stay in office. Right. I need to do this. But but I'll, I'll, say you, I'll tell you this, though. The, the, the fact that, that – um, Hasslein is now suggesting that they kill the, these characters. There's nothing the president has said at this point that makes me agree. Makes me think that, that he, he agrees wants with to that. kill anybody. And, yeah. and, and, he's just kind of giving Hasslein something that says, but it's also unpopular. Not not like he's saying I want to kill them. I agree with you, but it's unpopular. The president is still just kind of going along with Hasslein saying. Uh, you know, I, I agree with I'm you. I'm not Richard. following you, but it's not unpopular. And, and unpopular. when I say this, I'm not saying that the film has now turned in. Let's kill them. I'm saying that when you tell a story, and when you introduce the idea of, do we kill them? Mm-hmm. You've now fundamentally changed what the narrative of the story is about. It's gone it, from a hey, we're, now there we're is fish danger. out of water in this crazy mixed up world where man rules and not ape, and now it's all right. Are we going to kill them or not? So everything that those characters do from that point forward now has Even, the suspect of do we kill them? The, it's the uh, Alfred Hitchcock of it, in this case the audience and half the and part of the it's strangers on a train or, or yeah. not that just know that there's a ticking bomb potentially exactly. under there of them being killed and and Zira and Cornelius have no idea about. That this that this sword of Damocles is hanging over their head. There is a French term for that whole idea that when you give an a thought or an image that the audience remembers that it, no one else knows, and I can't remember what that's called, but it's something about just inherent to the story that no matter what you do now as an audience, you, you project into it. You cannot let go of that, and I think that's why this is crucial. It, the president is the voice of reason. He, he's, he's like, should we harm them? No, we shouldn't. You're going to tell me to remove them? No, we're not. You know, that kind of thing. He is the voice of reason. But now that voice of doubt is also in the film, and it's not been there until now. Well, he, he specifically came around from his desk to kind of approach Hasline and talk about this moment. There was also something interesting uh, in the minute earlier. After Hasline puts the uh, cigarette cassette tape away, the rest of the scene, Hasline's arms are crossed. Hmm. Like he, his body posture defensive. suddenly becomes defensive when he's sharing with the president and the president gives him doubt every moment after this in these scenes, Hasline's arms are crossed. He's already defensive, which makes sense why you want, why he's, you know, given direction being hotly and all this kind of stuff. But the president still seems very calm, even though Hasline has already kind of pulled himself back. Mm-hmm. I want to, I want to digress real quick and say there are two things that we've not explained in this that I really need to do. When I asked Sean what he thinks of a movie till now, if you're new to us, Sean's never oh, yeah, seen this film. Seen That's why we ask it. Also, when we record these, I go and put in the minute post. Yeah. So when we sit here and say, is that in this minute? Please don't think we're three <laughs> ding-dongs. We just don't have the minute playing in front of us. We aren't hearing that. I, I hope to have that set up Richard at one point. Richard has a script in front of him, so that but helps. I have a script. I, and... I at least want to be fair to everyone. I know that a lot of people are new coming on to it. I'm, I assume you've heard that before, but I want to say it again. 
There, I've said it. Thanks for putting that halfway through the yeah, podcast. Well, so find you out. guys got going so much that I was like, "Screw it, I can't say it." Then, I, I, if I interrupt them in a conversation, I, it's well, almost I mean, like it's well, almost the, like I'm married to you guys. <laughs> Screw you. Sean hasn't seen it, so we don't want to talk about Thursday and Friday yet. But Todd and I know what's happening on Thursday and Friday in the minutes going forward. So when we talk about the motivations of the characters, we have to pull back. A 